It's me, Mushy, and you, you, and we are here together to do our first whip and chit. I said chit, C H I T. I'm telling you now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I've been promising ghost face whip and chit for a while, and I thought we could work on him together and shoot the chit. How is everyone doing this evening? Good, I hope. Uh, everything you see here that I'm using, I will link in the description down below. Because uh, I know I will forget to mention that. It's better to start off by mentioning it. Finally starting Ghostface. I have confession. I have started Michael. And I'm loving every second of it. Now you might hear some stuff in the background. That would be sundown cooking dinner. And... Little puppy dogs being puppy dogs. I will whoosh out any unnecessary noises as needed. And uh, yeah, with that, away we go. Um, nope, I lied. <laughs> I can't get my magnet straight. Here we go. So, hi! <laughs> I'm Mushy. And I guess I'll just make this uh, whip and chit about you know introducing myself in case you haven't seen any of my other videos or want to know more than I have divulged in other videos or you're new here hi <laughs> I am I guess I'll just start with some stats how about that I, I don't really like talking about myself so I, I don't do well at it bear with me but uh, I am 44, and I live in South, nope, 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 I almost made the mistake, I live in Northeast, Arkansas, or Arkansas if you're normal, um, just moved here from California back in April, when I was in California, I lived in Modesto, California, um, actually really hated it there. They over glamorize California. Oops, to the max. It is not as glamorous as you see in the movies or you might expect. I promise. There are two seasons there. Summer one and summer two. Summer one is like nine months of pure hell. And summer two is three months of lesser hell. A wetter hell. It's still nasty, but um, it's just wetter. The rainy season, I guess, if you will. Everything there, at least in the area we lived in, which is the Central Valley, it was everything was always brown. Lots of farming, so it was always real dusty. Um, plain, flat, stinky. So. I was glad to be able to move and then coming here to Arkansas was quite a shock and a change because everything here is lush and green and there are hills and uh, forests and all that good stuff. I was like, my first thought when I, when I got here was, oh my gosh, real trees. I have been so used to seeing palm trees. And I was like, real trees, so pretty. <laughs> it's been too long since I had seen a real tree. But um, I am a mom. I have a daughter. She's grown. She's 23. And um, a handful still. Do they ever, somebody please tell me, do they ever become not a handful. I thought once we hit 18 and like there was going to be a magical switch, she was going to turn adult and um, suddenly become not a handful. Not the case. <laughs> not a case. Not the case. Still a little pain in my, in my rear. Um, my lover, my lover. She moved here to Arkansas with me from California, and um, 
she works at Michael's and therefore, uh, oh, I should say, I should preface this by saying she is also a crafter. Not, she did do one diamond painting. She's not so much into the diamond painting. Um, she's more of a crochet, knit, draw, paint, um, author books, that kind of artistic. This, she did do one diamond painting, um, of Jason. I'll probably insert a picture if you guys are interested in seeing it. It's hanging up on our wall. And that was enough for her. She was like, yeah, no thanks. So, uh, I tried. I tried to get her hooked on diamond painting with us, but, um, sadly she was impervious to my efforts of harboring that addiction in her. Um, yeah. So as you can imagine, working at Michael's and being a crafter as soon as payday comes payday goes you know what I'm saying like she goes to work with money and comes home with no money and a bag of stuff <laughs> I guess the deals and the, the prices and then the sales and the employee discount on top of it and the little vouchers that she earns when she spends it just is too enticing for her I was afraid that would happen but you know it is what it is. Um, what else can I tell you? I am, uh, I don't know. What am I? I'm educated. Uh, I do have a doctorate degree. I have a Juris Doctorate, which is a um, doctorate degree in law. In the most technical sense, could you call me Dr. Mushy? Yes. But lawyers don't usually go by doctor this and that. So, um, yeah, I am unlicensed. I have not taken the bar exam in the state for medical reasons. I just am not up for it right now. So I am unlicensed and not practicing. But I do have the education for whatever that's worth. It's a pretty wall ornament. <laughs> Um, why did I start diamond painting? Um, I started diamond painting a couple years ago. I was diagnosed, uh, misdiagnosed with, uh, stage four metastatic liver cancer. Um, I do have a bunch of tumors on my liver, but the doctors who discovered them initially were very, very wrong. Um, scared the living crap out of me. Um, but I, I was diagnosed with stage four metastatic liver cancer and had had a couple of at, what at the time they thought were mini strokes, transient ischemic attacks or TIAs, if you will, had two in the same day right around the same time I, they discovered my tumors and I think it was just the stress, but, um, I started, uh, having panic attacks as one can imagine getting news like that. You know, you go to the doctor talking about, you know, I'm nauseous. I don't feel good. I'm a little achy on the side, whatever. And you think, Oh, ulcer. Oh, pulled muscle. Oh, you know, something, more benign, you know, tumors weren't even on my radar. And then, uh, you know, so I got blindsided by the news that I had tumors, let alone, uh, what they initially thought was terminal cancer. Um, so of course, along with that initial diagnosis came panic attacks. I not, I've always been a high strung person, but um, uh, never had any kind of anxiety or panic. Just, I just get wound up, you know, and easily, well, that's trash drill. Let me get rid of that. Um, easily set off, I guess you could say, but never panicky until then. So to help kind of keep my cool and, uh, Oops, there's some to help keep my cool and stay kind of in my right mind, if you will. 
I needed something to focus on and video games was cutting it. Uh, but you can't play video games all day, every day, all the time. Uh, so I needed something else that I could do to kind of let me use this to kind of take my mind off of it when I couldn't be sitting in front of a TV or a computer zoned out. Um, so I started looking for adult coloring stuff on Amazon because I thought adult, uh, adult can't speak adult coloring books. Um, you know, I always liked to color, but I'm not creative, so I can't, and I'm not artistically talented in that I can't draw on my own and stuff. So, um, while searching for that, diamond art came up, like these diamond art kits, and I'm like, what is that? And I kind of looked, you know, at the pictures and stuff, I'm like, that looks pretty cool. Well, let me try that. So I ordered that along with my coloring stuff, and I ended up doing the diamond art kit first and was hooked that was it it took one kit one one drill on one spot on one kit and I was immediately hooked um, it just I don't know seeing the image come together from you know a, a flat picture to you know a three-dimensional shiny just seeing how the drills alter the art um, and what I can create without having to uh, figure out and be creative on my own. Does that make sense? Like without having to create a brainchild of my own because I am not creative. <laughs> um, there's something soothing about it to me and placing, placing drills just so. Uh, getting them in the exact right spot and trying to get them straight and keep paying attention to what drill I'm using at one sp what spot. It just really helped soothe my mind and keep me focused. And so uh, there began the addiction. And fast forward a couple years, here we are, still diamond painting and loving every second of it. When I don't have a diamond painting kitted up, to work on. If I don't have an active whip, um, you know, in between whips, or I didn't grab a dot there. Um, I just don't feel right. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's kind of like a little soothing, cozy blanket for me in my little pea brain. But yeah, that's how I started diamond painting and why I started diamond painting. What, what it does for me. From what I gather watching like other people's videos and whip and chats and um, stuff, I've heard a lot of diamond painters mention that they have something, you know, whether it's anxiety or um, OCD or, you know, any of those kind of afflictions seem to gravitate toward this type of craft. Uh, and I see why. I see why. Um, something about it has a soothing quality. It it pets my the OCD part of my brain and makes it very very happy and calm. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I don't know what else can I tell. I guess I did mention medical stuff. Um, I do have, at last count, almost as many tumors as years of life so far. They are spread out throughout my body. I have uh, over two dozen on my liver. I had um, one, two, let me think. I had three, I think three in my breasts. Uh, one of them was close to the, like on the surface of my skin, like protruding. Uh, so they, it was below my clavicle. They still considered it, that's more my chest area, like the clavicle, but um, they still considered it breast. So uh, the breast surgeon removed that. We got rid of that one. Um, there are two, one in each one in each twin, um, chilling, living their best lives, <laughs> kind of being monitored by doctors, keeping an eye on them. Um, 
Then I had a tumor removed from my cervix um, two years ago. And I currently have a tumor on my brain and a, I think they said four or five on my spine, my upper, I think. If I understood the report right and the doctors and stuff, it's they're up kind of where your neck meets your head-ish. And then um, they are investigating um, on images. They thought they, they think they saw something potentially on my thyroid. And now my pituitary gland is what I'm getting tested for. That's the blood work I got done um, the other day that I mentioned in my last video. And what I'm going to follow up with the doctor tomorrow. I get to have an ultrasound and uh, an exam and review my blood work results. So I guess something in the blood work can detect if there's potentially a pituitary gland tumor. So uh, we'll hopefully find out more information tomorrow. But all, all of the tumors, to my knowledge at this moment, are currently benign. The first doctor was a complete idiot um, and jumped the gun. He saw the tumors he, on my liver. He saw the size and the quantity and assumed without con, you know, conducting a biopsy or any other testing first, uh, assumed that because of their size and and quantity must be, uh, oh, and my family history, I guess, uh, must be liver mets. <laughs> he was wrong, but I had to live under the assumption that, uh, that I had stage four liver mets for several months before I got some actual answers. So that was pretty scary, but uh, yeah, first doctor was an idiot. It turns out that my tumors, at least the ones on my liver and the ones in my breast, are uh, the liver ones are hepatic, ad inflammatory hepatic adenoma type B. If I understood, I don't, I don't doctor language well, medical stuff, <laughs> but that's my understanding is a type of tumor, and basically it's a super rare kind of tumor that can turn malignant. So just because they're benign today doesn't mean they will be tomorrow. So at any time they can just decide, I'm having a bad day, uh, let's flip the humanity switch and become malignant. Um, and then uh, they also are prone to rupturing or bursting. And if either of those occur, it's going to be pretty... Uh, devastating but as it is right now at last check um, all my tumors are benign and so they have not flipped their humanity switch yet uh, and gone evil and thankfully I have not had any rupture I just have to be careful can't lift too much stuff I have to be careful with physical activity lifting um, to be careful what I eat because it messes with my my GI system and whatnot. A bunch of stupid little stuff. Um, also, uh, I am currently being evaluated for MS. I have lesion clusters, two of them, on my brain. And all the symptoms of MS. So, uh, got kind of a double whammy with the medical stuff. But, um, you know, I sound, if I sound cavalier about it, it's because it was kind of expected uh, in that um, when I was 23, I had cervical cancer. And um, my family history, everybody down my dad's side of the tree has um, had and died from cancer. So I had the odds stacked against me in terms of 
the likelihood I would get one of these ailments. Um, you know, I was just, I got the tumor part, <laughs> but so far uh, I've been lucky enough not to have the malignant part. Um, Uh-oh, barky dogs. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, but hey, when you get a whip and shit, that's what you get, at least in this house. Sorry. Um, but yeah, that's why a diamond paint. Uh, I have, I'm kind of down a lot, you know, in terms of not feeling well, uh, not able to fully function. I am being um, assessed for a disability status. So, because uh, I just can't. I can't function consistently like a normal human in a lot of ways. So uh, that is why I, uh, I diamond paint. I have free time. It's a beautiful craft. It soothes my mind. It is not physically get on there. It's not physically exerting. And it's beautiful. So, um, which kind of leads me into... Uh, if you notice here, I am using a diamond painting ruler. I don't see a lot of people um, use them. Um, and each to their own. You know, you don't use one. Uh, your art is just as beautiful as someone who does use one. I, I don't think one way is better or whatever than the other. I use mine because um, with my health issues and some of the side effects. I do have some motor skill issues pop up and the ruler helps me keep my drills in line because otherwise it would just look like I took a handful of drills and sneezed and, and spewed them all over the painting. <laughs> so, um, and it, and it does also have a little bit to do with my OCD. I like things orderly. I like things neat. And I figure the way I look at it is like this. I spent money and, uh, and time on these um, canvases. You know, I bought these canvases. There, there's my money. I spend hours upon hours... Like this 20 by 30 is probably going to take me, you know, anywhere from 20 to 30 hours, including kidding up and kidding down. And so I spend my time, a significant amount of it, and um, I want it to turn out the best it can. And for me, with my um, situation, using a ruler has vastly improved the quality of the finished product for me you can see uh, and I might show you sometimes some of my earlier diamond paintings that I've done without the help of a ruler oops and you'll be able to see like that I need tweezers to get that piece of glue dot off here uh, anyway you, um, some of my earlier stuff that I did before I knew there were diamond painting accessories in general and rulers and other aids I um, that work turned out kind of a little sloppy looking in my opinion to me you know uh, compared with using the ruler and how that finished product turns out in my eye looks a lot less sloppy. So I figure if I'm going to invest this much money and time into doing this, I would like it to turn out the best it can be. Um, does it slow me down? Arguable. I mean, some people argue that rulers slow you down because uh, if I weren't using a ruler, I could multi-place, uh, speed things up a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, it might slow me down. It might take me longer than someone who doesn't use a ruler to um, finish a project. But, you know, it's not a marathon to me. It's 
something I like to do while watch TV, hang out with the family, have some alone time. If I'm stressing on uh, over something, if I'm just not feeling good, it takes my mind off it. I'm not rushing. You know, I don't feel the need to hurry, hurry, hurry and get it done and move on to the next. Though, uh, I have to admit, um, by the time we get to the, the end of one canvas, I'm ready. You know what I mean? It's like I, I'm not in a particular rush, but I am ready to move on to another one. You know, you, you look at the same picture. See, this is messing up. Oops. I need to put washi tape in here because my tip, um, keeps wiggling around. That's part of the problem there with this top line. So I apologize. I will fix it. Trust me. It's going to bug me if I don't, but anyway, the, um, by the time we're done, I'm usually ready for another canvas. Um, what else can I tell you about myself? Sorry if I went into too much detail about the heavy stuff, but I mean, it is a huge part of who I am and why I diamond paint and why, you know, I diamond paint the way I do. And so figured I'd throw it out there into the world. Um, let's see. I, uh, I said I had a daughter, uh, I told you how old I was. Uh, my education, where I live generally. Um, how about my genre? Like, I can talk about that. Um, as you will, as you may have noticed, if you've seen my previous videos, uh, the, the name of my channel or, uh, just by nature of the work that we're doing right now the washi tape kind of says it the image kind of says it oh, cover minor um I like the dark and creepy stuff I can appreciate beauty in in even the kind of gruesome or scary or I don't know what you would call you know so I, horror movies and stuff you know it's uh, I think the reason why people like horror movies, at least the reason I do, is you still get, it's kind of like a haunted house at Halloween. You still get that scare factor, right? Um, but you're safe. It's just being able, that adrenaline rush, you, you're, you get scared, you get to experience fear and the rush that comes with that, but also you're safe, you know? You're in a safe environment, and so um, that's part of it. Let me get my cover minder right. There we go. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I like, I like, I have, you can see my tattoo here. Uh, I got this with my daughter. She has a matching one on her hand. Um, got Jason up on there. But I, we, we, Aaliyah and I bonded over, um, our love for horror movies, horror games, the, the old school stuff is the stuff that we're the biggest fans of, you know, like Michael, Jason, Freddy, uh, the more modern stuff is good too. Don't get me wrong. She's a little too chicken to watch some of the newer horror movies with me, but, uh, is that lined up right folks? hard for me to see from the angle I'm at. I feel like it's not. Let me fix it. Yeah, we bond over that stuff. Uh, she, she and I spent a lot of time playing Friday the 13th video game. Um, I played the original Nintendo one, if anyone's old enough to remember that. If you're a gamer and you remember that one. But I, but the Friday the Thirteenth I'm referring to is the more modern one um, that came out several years ago. There, I like that better. She and I play that together a lot. Now we play Dead by Daylight, um, but I'll get into that I guess in a minute. I what I was trying to say was um, I I appreciate the beauty in some of this stuff that people might find 
arguably maybe offensive in some way or um, distasteful. I don't think, you know, Ghostface, Jason, Michael, uh, you know, more gruesome photos, zombies, or anything like that. I don't find it distasteful. I don't find it off-putting. Um, you know, I enjoy it. I enjoy the movies. I enjoy uh, the imagery. So, not in like a, you know, creepy way. Not like a Norman Bates type of way. Just normal person who likes horror movies and zombie movies and horror games and zombie games. So, but um, I don't, I was looking on YouTube like when I realized, wait a minute, you know, there might be people out there that are doing diamond painting. And I, I can watch and listen while I diamond paint. And... I uh, started seeing people on YouTube, but I couldn't find very many people that are actively doing exclusively darker stuff. Um, I didn't start, admittedly, I didn't start until looking around till Halloween-ish time recently on YouTube or, you know, Twitch. But um, you would think, oh, I almost boo-booed there. You would think that, you know, especially because I was thinking, oh, Halloween, people are going to be doing spooky, ooky stuff. I'm going to get to see some of the kind of stuff I like to work on and I like to see. But I just saw a bunch of like cute little kittens and witch hats and <laughs> cute little ghosts, you know, with a sign that says boo or whatever and little dressed up gnomes. And I was like, hmm, I mean... You know, I, and I was hearing the word cute thrown around a lot. Oh, this is cute. This is cute. And I was like, well, I mean, yes, I guess. And no, I mean, it's cute. I could see why people would think those images are cute. But um, like, to me, this is cute. You know, this uh, ghost face in a Christmas hat with a candy cane dagger and Christmas lights. That's... I'm like, huh, that's cute. You know, I see the, I guess, the humor in it. Um, it visually, uh, to me, appeals to me. I I can't say you will never see me do something cute, like fuzzy little animals or, you know, little gnomes or whatever. Um, a confession, I do have some of that in my stash. But... Um, Predominantly, what I have is dark fantasy, horror, adult explicit, having to do with horror movies, horror icons, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, what I was, I guess my point being is that when I was searching around, I couldn't find too many people that were doing the, the darker, creepier stuff. And, and even if they were, um, they did do a, a Pennywise diamond painting or a... a, a a Michael or, you know, it wasn't something that they were doing exclusively. It was just kind of a one-off for Halloween. And I'm like, but I, it's Halloween in my world year round. Like I, I enjoy the ooky spooky all year and I don't really enjoy landscapes, um, animals. I mean, in art, I mean, I enjoy animals in real life, like living, breathing creatures. I enjoy them, but uh, I mean, artistically, uh, for projects I'm working on, I don't, I don't enjoy, you know, flowers and landscapes and boats and, uh, birds or any of that kind of stuff. I enjoy the stuff that makes you, you know, think, Ooh, that's creepy. That's kind of spooky. Yeah. You know, um, so that's predominantly what... I will be working on on this channel because there's got to be other people out there like me, right? Are you like me? Where, you know, you have a very particular taste in diamond painting, specifically like horror, you know, creepy, dark fantasy, and can't really find a whole lot of material 
out there that's exclusively that stuff because um, that's why I made the channel is because I figure I can't be alone in this I you know I'm talking to you true crime watchers you court tv watchers you know you people that watch the the trials and you know watch the the sh true crime shows about you know the serial killer interviews and um you know watch horror movies for fun because it is fun does that make me weird or creepy no i mean i don't think so i'm a normal average human so I just, um, I'm not a big fan of cartoons. I'm not a big fan of cute, ooty cutesy stuff. Um, this is my jam. You know, this stuff right here. It's my jam. So hopefully that's how and why you found me, or at least part of you likes this kind of stuff. And maybe if you like other stuff too, which is totally fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you know, any of that, but. If you like other stuff too, um, maybe I can, my channel can be your outlet, you know, for, for you to have that little, little blip of dark and creepy art. So, yep, that's kind of why I started filming. I was looking for more people like me and wanted to produce more content in this artistic genre for people who are like me that are maybe looking for this and can't find very much of it, you know? Uh, especially now that Halloween is over and it's harder to find. Everybody's kind of doing Christmas trees and wreaths and snowmen and things of that nature and it's getting harder and harder to find anyone who's consistently doing you know, some of the still what people might argue is Halloween-y stuff. Oh, hold on just a second. Sorry about that. Had to take a little break there. Urination station. It happens, right? You gotta go pee. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... I forgot where, what I was talking about. Probably a bunch of nothing. <laughs> Just a bunch of hot air. Um, I, I like video games. Do you like video games? Um, the, the kind of video games I like to play. I'm getting old school. Like It's getting harder and harder to find video games that I actually enjoy and like to play. Make sure you guys can still see what I'm doing. Um... I liked MMOs, like old school MMOs, like World of Warcraft. I was into that for years and EverQuest 2, um, Rift, I think I played. I really liked, uh, oh, Final Fantasy 14. There's a new one coming out, <laughs> allegedly. I have it, I, it was a Kickstarter, I think, and I invested in it like, oh my gosh, five years ago or so so I'm a little nervous that I got got you know because it's still not out it's still not even in its beta phase it's called ashes of creation uh, they post stuff all the time about hey look what we're putting in the game doing to the game yada 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 but uh have I actually seen any I mean I've seen them do gameplay but have I gotten any action no uh is there a release date no so I'm a little nervous about that, but uh, it if it ever comes to into existence, it is the type of MMO I like. Um, I don't like the the newer what they call MMOs, like the battle royale, like Apex, Fortnite, uh, Gears, Call of Duty, the multiplayer games that are more arena and PvP, like player versus player based. Sorry about the background noise, you guys dinner time in the household cleaning up um i don't like those kind of games i use i like the old school and like in terms of video games my favorites were turn-based games like um the old school final fantasies we're talking up till about seven final fantasy seven um 
Dragon Quest was a favorite of mine, but they're morphing all these games into to fit modern desires and likes the younger people. And it's morphing away from like turn-based and you know MMORPGs to be more battle royale, uh, PvP, action RPGs, and I just don't enjoy those. So it's harder to find video games, but the ones that I do currently play and still very much enjoy. Um, Friday the 13th online, however, they are closing down the servers at the end of 2024. So, uh, and they haven't produced any new updated content for that game in like, what, two years or something? So that's kind of sad to see. I really enjoyed that. Um, I enjoy, and every, I mean, every night we stream on Twitch and by we, I mean, uh, myself and RG Sundown, who is my daughter's father. And sometimes even my daughter, Alveo Nacy on Twitch will stream with us. But, uh, and me, I'm Mushmillow79 on Twitch as well. Come see me. Um, but we play Dead by Daylight. Uh, almost every night, most nights, uh, if we miss a night, it's because somebody's sick or hurt. <laughs> um, otherwise we're on every night. Cause I figure, you know, since we play together as a family, I might as well put it out there in case anybody else wants to join us and watch us fail miserably at surviving. <laughs> um, and then uh, my daughter and I like to play Seven Days to Die, which is a zombie apocalypse horror survival game. And it's got crafting and looting and zombies and horde nights and jump scares. And I uh, really like that one. Um, otherwise, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We do get to play that on occasion. We do have it. Um, just haven't played it much lately. We've been all Dead by Daylight. They just put Chucky in as a killer on, day on Dead by Daylight. And so, uh, and right before that, they had put the alien, uh, Xenomorph alien in. And uh, Ellen Ripley as a survivor. Nicholas Cage is a survivor in Dead by Daylight now. So, uh, we've been all about that because these, this content's been coming out rapid fire, you know, just like one after another, after another, boom, boom, boom. Um, so that's been taking up a lot of our attention on the, in the gaming sphere. But, um, we do play Texas Chainsaw Massacre on occasion. Uh, and hope to incorporate it more into our Twitch streaming. Uh-oh. Bark monsters. And a paw. Sorry about that. I tried to spare you the dogs barking. As I've mentioned before in other videos, these dogs will bark at everything and nothing. They hear a tick fart 500 miles away under a log, and they will bark. <laughs> so, um... And when one barks, the other joins in, and it just becomes a whole thing. Oh, I do have a diamond on there. Uh, but yeah, video games. We're talking about video games. Um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And another new game that's coming out that I'm really psyched about uh, is another zombie apocalypse survival shooty kind of game. Similar, I guess, to like Daisy, if you know of that game or um maybe a little like seven days to die uh it's called the day before and that's coming out early release december 7th and um yes i will be there playing it you betcha i can't wait i think i have convinced sundown to join me in the endeavor i will absolutely attempt to bully um Al into playing with me. Not really bully, you guys. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have used the term bully. Um, I will try to convince her. 
No, I don't make her do anything she doesn't want to do. Um, no, I will definitely try to turn her on to that. Um, so I can draw them into the fun with me. Oops. And I will stream it if I can. So you guys can come along and see if you like. Um, I will forewarn you. I've been pretty tame, mild on here on my videos, but, um, on stream, I am generally, you could describe me as potty mouthed, foul mouthed. <laughs> I have a sense of humor that lives in the gutter, so I tend to have less of a filter. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know there's much else to know about me. Um, probably already said too much. I'm sure none of it was interesting. <laughs> I'm a pretty boring person. Um, really, I don't do much. I'm a homebody. I like my bubble. I call my home my bubble. I like my bubble. I don't like to go out if I... If I don't have to, um, I get exhausted easy, so it takes a lot out of me just to, like, get ready for the day and put on a face and put, you know, do up my hair and get presentable for facing people in the real world and, uh, I don't know, I'm just most comfortable at home and... Not much of a social bee, if you will. It's kind of a homebody. Don't do anything super fun and exciting, um, but I find it fun and exciting uh, to go. I want to go to the diamond mines, y'all. Apparently, somewhere in this region is a diamond mine and a seven-year-old from a neighboring town went to this diamond mine for his birthday and oh I missed some and dug himself up like a multi-carat brown yellow diamond at this diamond mine and what you dig up there and find there you get to keep and um boy well what a honking birthday present right <laughs> <laughs> go dig some diamonds go dig around the dirt as a seven year old come home with like a gajillion dollar diamond um sign me up <laughs> I don't even need to wait for my birthday I'll go whenever <laughs> uh oh yeah mushy that's why we put the lid on there you go mushy <laughs> herp derp so I'm excited to, to, has anybody else done like a di something like that, like diamond mines or gemstone mines or anything like that? Have you done that before? Did you enjoy it? Did you get anything um, worth, I mean, it didn't even have to be worth money to, to be worth doing, right? What is that, an R? Yeah. That's an R. There's not too many, so we're not going to dump the R into the tray. Um, but yeah, did you get anything? You get a, a gem, something to take home, a little souvenir or something, or something to gift to someone maybe? Yep, where was that straggler? I, now that it's cooled down, um, uh, I, I get that the ground is going to be harder, um, which could probably pose a problem for diamond digging endeavors oh look 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 i found a, a stray w there we can use our straggler yay um but i don't like the heat so it's perfect for me to go out there i don't care if it makes the ground harder i don't know i can't really tell in this light if this is a 310 or if this is an uh, this dark brown gray that we're 
use in here. So I'm just going to, I'm going to put that to the side and not risk putting the wrong color in the wrong place. So we'll put that in the questionable mystery drills container that I forgot to bring in here. Is that an R also? I think so. R's and B's. Might have been a B because there's a B. Oh, I hate when the letters are close like that. And see, this S is a little nondescript, but it is what it is. What if I it makes it harder for you guys to see, but does it help me see? Not really. <laughs> Not really. Um, a little light, me light. No, didn't really help discern the shape of that letter for me. So, what do we got here? This is like a maroony brown. It's an interesting color. I like how it's doing a definite, like a a non-definitive gradient. You know, it's kind of going black to like a black, you know, like a dark, 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 dark gray, and then this, like, brown maroon. Let's do it. Is that an S, you guys? It's so hard to tell. I think that's an S. If you could see it better than me and I messed up, tell me in the comments. I'm not going to go back and find that particular bead, but if it looks out of place at the end, I'll replace it with something that looks better. Which is something I do with my diamond paintings. Uh, when I'm done, I take a look at the picture as a whole. And if something, if there's like, if right here was a random like bright pink in the middle of a sea of black beads. And I, it just doesn't look right. And there's no real reason for it to be there. I'll replace it. Um, because you know what? I mean, they charted this and, and, but really these, these canvases, in my opinion, are just a guide they're just a guide for, you know, you to create an image, but ultimately you're the master of your craft and you can make whatever adjustments, changes, um, that you want to. And if something doesn't look right to you, it's, it's your finished art. You change it to what you want it to look like. Sometimes, um, I will put special beads in. You know, the, the fig, I can't, the fixie, the fairy dust, the pixie dust, the aurora borealis, or ABs, if you will, um, rhinestones. There's so many different kinds of diamond uh, drills, you know. Uh, I currently am a little obsessed with adding glow in the dark to my diamond paintings. This one will get some glow-in-the-dark treatment. I think it's out of frame. See, uh, I can't really see it. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it. I'm probably going to put it in the candy cane dagger or and or his face mask. Um, it's probably where we're going to add some glow-in-the-dark pizzazz. Just so, you know, you can look at the art hanging on the wall and be like, oh, that's really kind of pretty cool. And then you can turn the light off and be like, whoa, you know, I like that. Um, I like the effect that glow in the dark has like that. I like, oh, we're chilling in the living room and the lights on and we're watching shows or whatever. And then everybody gets ready to go to bed and you turn off the lights and you got a bunch of scary, creepy, uh, glowing faces staring at you. I like that. It's not for everyone, but it is for us. Uh, got a little horror section of wall in the living room where we put our favorite horror diamond paintings. So, what do you guys do with your diamond paintings? Do you um, frame them and put them up? Do you give them away? Do you donate them? Do you take them to craft fairs to sell? Do you um, have a shop? I like the idea, and and honestly, my family and I have discussed the idea of maybe opening a small shop at some point. Is that an E? You got, I can't. 
really tell what what that is. I'm gonna borrow this for a second. Sorry. Yeah, I think I think that's an E. I can't light on, light off. It doesn't matter. It's so fuzzy. I can't really tell. But to me, it looks like an E. So. Uh, but yeah, what do you do with yours? Um, you put, there, put it in a portfolio, maybe? I do gift some. Um, I do hang some on the wall. I have some. Oh, come on. I have some in a portfolio. This is not it's supposed to be so difficult. There we go. <laughs> Yikes. Um... But yeah, I, we had talked about opening a shop, you know, just a small local, um, where we can maybe try to sell some of our extra creations, diamond art finishes, um, crochet. My daughter, like I said, she crochets little critters, like stuffies and stuff, and keychains and hats and scarves and blankets and um, we have a small farm um, right now currently uh, is only poultry where did you go found you it's currently only poultry ducks and chicken but we are gonna expand I believe is the plan in the spring We'd love to have some like goats, pigs. Um, my daughter wants like a zoo. <laughs> so, um, you know, peacocks have been out here before. And... But yeah, we could sell some of our farm stuff. We're currently selling eggs. We have just so many eggs, you guys. I think we're getting like a dozen a day or so. Duck eggs and uh, chicken eggs. It's... We're begging people, please take an egg. What do you want for breakfast, lunch, dinner, eggs? <laughs> um, but yeah, what do you what do you do with yours? Um, I'd like to know. What am I? Oh, I'm on B. Okay, we're almost finished up, you guys. I can't think. I'm not really good at talking about myself. Um, like I said, pretty boring, so I can't really think of anything super entertaining. But I just wanted to come on here and introduce myself to you guys. I didn't want to just, I sort of just did what I didn't want to do, which was um, just start making videos and putting them out there like, hey, I've been here the whole time. You already know who I am or you should. No. <laughs> nope. I, uh, I wanted to do this whip and chat first, but unfortunately. Unfortunately, just with schedules and yappy dogs and lack of free time and quiet time and stuff, it's been really hard for me to be able to find a, a good time to film a whip and chit um, for those reasons. But I am going to make a concerted effort. I sat down with the family and I was like, hey guys, for real. I mean, I, I don't ask for a whole lot, but I am going to ask for this, you know. I, w I would like some some me time. You could help me out, keep the dogs quiet, and let me film some whip and chits once in a while, maybe once or twice a week. You know, maybe even stream. I might stream some whip and chits. And I'm saying chit, uh, not excrement. I need to borrow this for a minute, sorry. Woo, let me see. I dropped things. That's a P. Let me find my P. I dropped stuff and things on my floor. I will find them. Don't worry. So, yeah, um, that's darn near it, guys. We have reached the end of my blathering <laughs> and the end of our section. Yay! Well, I finally did it. <laughs> Oop, got a barking dog. My, that was my fault. I set my diamond painting pen down. Like I, t I told you, these dogs, they will bark at like literally everything and nothing at the same time. I set my diamond painting pen down on my desk and apparently that was cause for alarm. <laughs> oh boy. 
But with that, we are finished. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and um, staying around and get to know me and let me introduce myself to you so that you know who I am. And in the comments below, talk to me. Let me know who you are. I would love to know who's watching and a little bit about you. And do you have similar interests in the art or video games even? Uh, come check me out on Twitch if you do like video games. You want to see me, uh, Sundown, Alvanisi, play some uh, survival games. Come see us on Twitch, Mushmellow79, um, RG Sundown, and Alvanisi. So, I guess that's it, folks. We're done with our section, and that's it for this Whip and Chit. And I will see you in the next one. Have a naughty night. Bye.